when you stick your finger into the <laughs> semi dry of semi art it's literally gonna stick like this it's really semi dry <laughs> it's actually sticky yeah like that hi guys this is again alan and welcome back to my channel today here in the philippines we are now on our 22nd week of the quarantine and i'm praying that you guys are all safe and sound at home Today we are going to be having again another watercolor review. This is one of the sets that we unboxed last week. This is no other than Simi Arts Semi Dry Watercolors from China. I got my set at Shopee Philippines, particularly at the Simi Art PH account for 623 Philippine pesos or roughly 12.5 US dollars. It's actually on sale right now and the original price is 1246 Philippine pesos or roughly 25 US dollars. If you're interested, I'll be putting the link at the description box so you can directly access it. As of now, I haven't seen this set yet from any other small scale store except at Simi Art's page. But we all know that Chinese manufacturers make these very cheap supplies with no brands or labels at all and offer them for rebranding or repackaging. I have this strong feeling that this is a repackaged unit by Simi Arts and I don't know, I just have that strong feeling. A few months ago, I went to uh, Alibaba.com which is an online wholesaling sort of a market for resellers and I believe I saw this set with a different cover and it was offered at a very low price for wholesaling like you need to get 1000 and it says there that they are offering repackaging or you know if you want to personalize the brand name and cover etc so i believe yeah this is from there but i'm not sure i just have this strong feeling and i think one clue is that they don't have any detailed information about their products which is the same with the solid watercolors that we reviewed a few weeks ago but anyway, I have no any problems with that as long as the products perform well. So now let's check their packaging. The box is covered with this paper protection and it says here semi dry watercolor. It has a beautiful colorful artwork in front and it says here 24 colors, no other information. At the back is where you'll find the brand name Simi Art and here's a color chart with no color names and here are some notes so here they're saying the solid watercolor is semi dry it offers a smooth consistency as well as extraordinary brilliance luminosity and longevity it is suitable for both professional artists and abc darians so beginners it offers saturated and colorful colors you can use a palette to mix these colors as well the color lumps are easy to be removed and replaced in their cases. So I'm wondering if they are selling individual uh, pans. Anyway, solid watercolors also requires less setups compared to the tube watercolors. It is more convenient for the users to carry and paint outdoors. So here the color chart has no names, no light fastness or pigment information. But it says here luminosity and longevity i believe for longevity that means the light fastness maybe so let's check the box and for this i'm using my palette knife because it is still covered in plastic So also in this box, you cannot find any other information like brand name or the address or the phone number of the manufacturer. And also looking at it, it's not perfectly, you know, square. Like this is a little tapered on this side. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's me being OC as an architect. Anyway, hmm. This really looks like the Kuretake Gansai Tambi, right? So it also has a film cover. Anyway, the cover doesn't have any other information also. So here now is our set. 
it smells like paper or no um, the smell of it reminds me of the typical Chinese poster paints um, Chinese watercolors like the Marys yeah it smells like that it's a little strong but not bothering and at the back it has a number code but we do not know how to reference the number code and if in case I find the information how to spot the the information for the codes I'll be putting at the description box and also might pin it at the comment section. Anyway, let's compare this just quickly with our uh, Kuretake Gansai Tambi. So here is the Kuretake Gansai Tambi and I think it's very similar except for the obvious difference that the paints at the Kuretake Gansai Tambi are more consistent when it comes to appearance and to the you know the texture of the paints because here some are smooth and some are rough or have some bubbles okay, okay let's have this too so I think they're very similar They are very similar. Even the tapering is also very comparable. And also the level of the paints, how they are filled, is also the same. And also just for a quick comparison, I'd like to emphasize this huge difference between the Kuretake Gansai Tambi and the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors because um, when you stick your finger into the <laughs> Semi Dry of Simi Art, it's literally gonna stick like this. It's really semi dry. <laughs> it's actually sticky. Yeah, like that. As compared to the Kuretake Gansai Tambi, you can feel that there's moisture in it, that it's also semi dry, but it's not sticky. So I think it all boils down to your preference. So if you are, you know, paranoid to cracking paints, I think this gets the point. But yeah, so far, none of the paints from my Kuretake Gansai Tambi has cracked. Anyway, let's set these aside. So from this view, you can see that the colors are very deep and some colors are already almost non-recognizable. And for me, that is a good sign. That is a sign of intensity of colors. But I feel like rearranging them based on uh, spectrum or based on my preference but I hope I don't get a mistake in uh, rearranging them since they did not provide the color names and pigment information I was just only able to write down here the number codes that they provided at the back of the pants and in case I find the information that we need I'll be putting the information at the description box or at a pinned comment and for these swatches and sample painting, we are using, of course, Arches 185 Cold Press Cotton Paper, as always. And for the brushes, we have here um, Rembrandt Size 4 Pure Red Sable and uh, our Raphael Precision Brush Size 2 for our swatches. And of course, we are not re-wetting our semi-dry watercolors prior to uh, swatching and painting, to be fair, with the other brands that we have reviewed before. Okay, so now we are ready to start. So obviously, this is magenta. This is a rose color and this is carmine. I think this next one is our mid-red. This could be a permanent red. Or no, it's, I think, naptal red. So for our first line, I am very happy because, first of all, my sequencing is correct based on spectrum. And also the colors are really very saturated, mostly transparent. And you can see that this color is this, this one is this one, this one is this one. From here, you can almost not identify the colors because they're very deep. So that's a good sign of, you know, color intensity. So let's continue with the second line. Okay, 
So far, these four colors are more on the opaque side, but let's see if they stay the same after they dry. Wow, this is a very nice green, like a Perilin Green or PBK31. Now we are on our third line, and still I think I'm on the right track in our sequencing of the colors. This is also a beautiful turquoise, um, turquoise blue or turquoise green color. So I believe this is their Prussian blue. And of course this has to be Thalo blue. I think this is the most critical color for my review the ultramarine and yeah it is ultramarine so if this color shows granulation this will almost eliminate my suspicion that this can be ink based rather than pigment based Now let's go to the earth colors and this is obviously yellow ochre, that's why it's opaque. Now you can see that the yellows have become more transparent now except for the olive green here. So this one I think is raw sienna. And this next color is their burnt sienna. This is, I think, the. It's not actually raw umber, but I believe raw umber is what they're trying to have here. From here, it looks black, but light it's I think gray something oh this is paints gray and lastly is this yeah black see the difference between these two so now while waiting for our swatches to dry, let's now proceed first to our sample painting. And for our sample painting, I've only chosen six colors and the following colors are this one, the mid-yellow. I've also chosen the dark green, the color red number 17, also the thalo green, the ultramarine, and this brown which I believe is burnt sienna. So I think we can now start. And of course, we are going to be uh, speeding this up to save time. So if you have any questions, just comment it below and I'll be responding as soon as I can. So I think we're ready to start. So I think we can now remove our tape. Now our sample painting and swatches are finally dry, we can now have a closer look. For the color selection, they have 3 reds, 3 oranges, 2 yellows, 4 greens, 3 blues, 2 violets, 4 earth colors, and 3 neutral colors. The color selection is not bad at all, but I have some notes. Okay, so for a 24 color set, I believe 2 oranges, 
are already enough especially if the two are very similar so i think they can just leave one of these or maybe this one because this is closer to vermilion which is a warm red and instead of having this um yellow orange i think they should have included a golden yellow or a deep yellow or warm yellow to complement the light or the cool yellow here and the mid yellow here and yellow is a primary color so i was expecting more yellows than oranges for the reds i have no problem here and for the green green is very essential color generally but i wish they had included here just one taylo green i think this will be enough and have sap green instead of this one for the blues um three blues is enough but if they can include a turquoise light that would be better and the violets are cool the earth colors are enough but i feel that the earth colors of uh semi art semi dry are the weakest in their line especially this one this is very light and this one could have been deeper and more transparent for the neutrals i am very happy with this one i think this is their paints gray or indigo but i think this one is weird it works well as a gray color but you really need this one if you already have a uh, black color in your line so instead of this i think they should have included a van dyke brown or an indian red i think that would be uh, a very good addition to this now when it comes to the vibrancy of the colors i think they are saturated they're very vibrant but not as vibrant as superior when it comes to the texture i'm still debating with myself if the one i'm seeing here is granulation because i am sensing that these paints generally are grainy the grains are very fine but those grains are not granulation because granulation gives you patterns you know organic patterns and yeah i think it's very visible here in this violet color it has granulation but the ultramarine doesn't have granulation but anyway it's a beautiful ultramarine the reason why i would love or i would want to see granulation here is because that would you know eliminate somehow my suspicion that this can be ink based because of course we want uh, pigment based watercolors not ink based because inks are cheaper and they will fade much easier as compared to pigments of course select pigments when it comes to our experience using the colors i was only able to use six but generally i am happy about the colors and although yeah they don't move really quickly but not bad at all especially this is a very cheap set and they form these hard edges that are for me not a huge issue because i can manage these edges and of course before you forget the chalky test because many of you are asking if the paint is chalky or not so my ultimate test now is to rub a napkin against our swatches and sample painting and if the paints you know smudge or mess the paper or yeah get into the napkin that that means it's chalky but yeah happily it's not it's not in here so i think they're good and i think our paper is clean so it's not chalky now we've come to our favorite part which is the comparison portion and let's begin with a set of paints that are obviously less performing as compared to the semi-art semi-dry watercolors let's begin with dong a creative giorgioni watercolor cakes best buy watercolors and the symbolion watercolors these four watercolor brands are unfortunately the weakest when it comes to the intensity and opacity so they are always at the bottom four Next are Bebeo Studio Watercolors, Mari's Watercolors, Prang 2007, Prang 2019, Mari's Watercolors, Faber Castell Tubes, Pentel Watercolors, Art Ranger Watercolors, Reeves, and Faber Castell Solid Watercolors. These are not bad at all, but still I prefer semi art, semi dry watercolors, not just because it's very affordable but also it is more transparent generally the colors are easier to handle and they're more vibrant 
Now our next set are the paints that are also very cheap and affordable and at the same time very much comparable to Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors. Let's begin with the Superior Watercolor and the Superior Fan Palette. So these are just the same paints but if I had to choose I think I'd still go with Superior because the colors are still more intense and this gives me a hint that they are pigment based at least <laughs> in one of the colors the ultramarine because this color gives you granulation I think it's obvious here and this is the semi art which also has texture but I'm not sure still if it's you know granulation next is the pretty excellent watercolors I think these two are very comparable you see that um, yeah, yellow ochre, very much the same. The black, also very much similar. But I can say that the pretty excellent is more transparent still. And uh, yeah, it can be a notch higher when it comes to intensity in some of their colors. But it's really hard to uh, <laughs> to see because, for example, here the Taylo blue here is deeper than the intense blue here but they can be a different color or pigment the earth colors of pretty excellent are better and also the yellows and oranges so yeah i think pretty excellent is still better as compared to semi art okay so let's compare to the semi art solid watercolors 50s this one the very popular <laughs> set of course they're from the same company but since i have this suspicion that you know they are just repackaged so they there's a chance that they are you know different and i think one proof here is that the ultramarine of the solid is obviously different um i think in the review of these solid watercolors i have stated that this is an ultramarine but now you can see that they are really different I think this is not pure ultramarine I think they mixed something with this and now it's obvious that yeah this one is real ultramarine this one can be a mix of thalo blue and uh, the ultramarine or this can also be a thalo blue red shade <laughs> I'm not sure that's why I'm looking for the texture or granulation it's hard to choose because the solids have stronger colors but they're more opaque. Semi Art has, you know, more transparent colors but yeah, but a lighter by a bit. But since they gave me a real ultramarine, I think I'm choosing the Semi Jai of Semi Art. Now let's proceed to some of these branded paints that are providing us more reliable information like light fastness code or pigment information. So I'm choosing these brands over the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors. Let's start with the Windsor and Newton China. Next we have Lucas Aquarel who considers themselves as artist grade. And also we have Kokuyo Kamlin. They don't have pigment coats here. But the colors are obviously very deep and vibrant. And they also have this strong character in me. And of course the Ultramarine is really good. Next is the Mary's Masters Watercolors. Next, we have Paul Rubens watercolors, also from China. The Prima Marketing Tropicals watercolors. And that is the same with the Mongyo Professional watercolors. And these three brands that we are going to be showing next are my top three student grade paints. Let's begin with the Sonnet watercolors. The same with the Windsor Newton Cutman. And of course, the Van Gogh 12 plus 3 half pans and the new colors of Van Gogh. Now for comparison's sake, let's compare side by side our swatches and sample paintings of our artist grade paints. So obviously these are better as compared to Simi Art. Let's begin with the Mijello Mission Gold Class 36 color set, the Windsor Newton Professional Pants, Hoban Artist Watercolors in Tubes, Egal Yohani Watercolors, Hoban Botanical Art Watercolor Set, White Knights Watercolor Tubes, 24 colors. White Knights Watercolors Full Pants. Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolor Sticks. Mijello Pure Pigment Set, 26 colors. 
Rembrandt Luxury Pocket Box Set, Half Pants, and of course, the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set. And of course, this comparison will not be complete without comparing our Simi Art semi dry watercolors against its exact lookalike, which is, of course, the Kure Take Gansai Tambi. But yeah, before we begin, this damage here is not caused by an expired paper but because of ants or insects. Okay? <laughs> anyway, this is a critical comparison because both of them did not provide pigment information. Kuretake has color names. But honestly, I feel that the Simi Art Semi Dry watercolors are better. Why? Because the colors, I think, are more alive and <laughs> they have a real ultramarine here because this one is not ultramarine. The difference also when it comes to performance is huge. The Simi Art Semi Dry watercolors are more moist and they're more easy to activate. The Kuretake Gansai Tambi are also easy to use, they're also easy to activate, but they're also thick. And that's because, of course, of its uh, components, which includes glue. I think the Kuretake Gansai Tambi falls on a different or a special category because some artists say that it's not watercolor. But since we are comparing water-based paints, I think it can also be compared with the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors. And for this, yeah, I'm choosing Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors. It's also cheaper. Each pan of the Kuretake Gansai Tambi costs 61 Philippine pesos or more than 1 US dollar. And the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors cost only 25 Philippine pesos roughly or 50 cents in US dollars. So now if you're gonna ask me would I recommend the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors, my answer is a definite yes. The performance of the Semi Dry Watercolors as compared to the other sets of the same price range is generally better. This set is very comparable to the popular Kuretake Gansai Tambi. But if I am to choose, I am still choosing the Simi Art Semi Dry because it's far cheaper and the colors are generally more saturated. And also, I love the character of the color. It has this texture that is not granulation but quite unique in their line. And also, I love the fact that they have here a real ultramarine. So, that gives a huge point in my selection. The price of Simi Art is very comparable to Superior, although the Superior watercolors are more vibrant still. The colors of Simi Art is not far from that. And you also have to consider that the pan size of Simi Art gives you at least two or three times more than the half pans of superior watercolors. If you need paints for sketchbooks, for practice, or for paintings to be scanned, then this set is totally fine. But if you are an artist who sells his or her paintings for display, then I would really suggest you to get some professional grade paints. You know, professional grade paints, artist grade paints are always a better investment as these paints give you better experience, better confidence, better assurance that your paintings are gonna last longer. Also, considering that you've selected the best pigments. So, I believe we're done with the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors. And if you want me to review anything, you can uh, put at the comment below box your suggestions and even links I'll be happy to uh, check them out and also if you have any other questions or suggestions comments reactions I love reading your comments and your opinions just put them all at the comment box and if I have not responded to you yet please understand that I am quite busy lately and uh, yeah but um, rest assured I'll be responding to each one of you very soon okay so that's all for today. Again, thank you for watching and see you again next week.